All right. My name is Matt Allen. I'm currently the offensive line coach at Alta Vista Combined School in Alta Vista, Virginia. And today I'm going to be talking about on simplifying O-line play with your run game. Um, just some contact info for me. That's my email, my phone, my Twitter, my YouTube channel is Bigs Rule the World. It's one of my YouTube chan it's one of the only YouTube channels dedicated solely to offensive line play. And you can check us out there at Bigs Rule the World on YouTube. Um, some background info on Alta Vista. Uh, to, I'm coaching for Andy Cox, head, head football coach. Andy's a good friend of mine. He's the I call him the ring whisperer. Prior to being the head coach at Alta Vista, he managed to win five state championships in a row as an assistant at two different schools. So I like to call him the ring whisperer there. Alta Vista uh, state football champs in 2009, 2013, 2014. For Kansas City Chiefs fans, they might know Juan Thornhill. Or UVA football fans, they might know Juan Thornhill. And what's the big deal about you know having an NFL player? Well, Alta Vista is a school with about 375 kids in it. So to have an NFL, uh, you know, a Super Bowl champion, NFL second round pick come from there is pretty neat. Uh, background info on me, I'm going to be coaching offensive line at Alta Vista this year for whenever our season starts in Virginia. Prior to that, I was the head coach at Chatham High School in Chatham, Virginia, then assistant football coach in Buckingham County High School from 2010 to 2015 a student assistant at Hampton City College, and I played football at Washington and Lee University for current head coach, uh, current Davidson head coach Scott Abel was my offensive coordinator for any of you triple option junkies. Uh, success of our offense, I want to talk about that real quick and just sort of what I'm going to be talking about as far as the run game goes. Um just to give some background info on what we did when I was at Chatham is going to be where most of this presentation is based off of um, the success of our offense in 2018. Prior to our first two games, we wanted to go in 2018. We wanted to go to the air raid offense um, and really start slinging the ball around our district, the Dogwood district, which I'm still in with Alta Vista. is a really tough district. If you talk about the Dogwood, you have – Something like 15 of the last 18 years, a state champion or state runner-up has been in the Dogwood. It's a school, it's a district based on pound the rock, be aggressive, strong teams. And when I got to Chatham, that's not what we had. So we went with the air raid to try to um, minimize the issues there. So in 2018, we came in, our only offense, you know, our only run game was going to be based around zone. And the first two games, our offense sputtered and struggled, as many of you probably have had before when you try to go to a new offense. Um, what happened? We put in the G scheme, which I'll talk about in a second. And the next two games, we managed to reel off for 664 yards passing, 212 yards rushing. Um, as how the year go, we kept toying with the G scheme a little bit. We toyed with some pulling and kicking out. And we're able to get more rushing yards. We led the region in passing yards. In 2019, we went full on into this investment, into this run game strategy for our offensive line. And what ends up happening? Well, we finished second in the region in passing yards, have one of the biggest turnarounds in the state of Virginia from one and nine to six and four and making the playoffs. Um, we we passed for close to 1,700 yards. We rushed for over 2,300 yards. We're second in the region in passing yards, I said. And what's neat about that is our quarterback, who goes down as, you know, setting every school record in passing, um, hurt his AC joint in game five of the season. And just really, you know, it took till late in the year until he could really sling it again. We won a ball game without him being able to throw a pass. You know, we were able to adjust. Um, we end up with the Danville area, which is good area of football, good solid teams from 4A down to 1A. Uh, we end up being the River City Danville area quarterback and coach of the year combination there. And I really think a lot of it had to do with how we simplified our run game with our schemes. And I'm going to talk about those today. Now, 
our family of plays that I'm going to talk about and I'm going to click over here to in a minute are our G series and our inside zone series or our Zier series. Okay. People aren't going to let me talk about it. Our, well, people aren't going to let me talk about my inside zone and call it true inside zone because we're not reading the backside in and I'll get to that in a second. Um, our bread and butter runs all revolve around that blocking scheme of block down, leave that play side end unblocked. Okay, our front side blocking on the inside zone is going to look the same as our G play, which is our power, our counter. Um, I told you about 2018, we struggled to run the ball a little bit with just out of inside zone. We complement the inside zone with our G look to the front side and our rushing numbers triple. That's just what happens. Now, Positives before I get into the film and I get into the breakdown here. Positives of leaving the play side unblocked on the inside zone. Some of you are probably going, well, that's inside veer. Some, it might be. Um, true veer people disagree with me on that. Um, I like it because it puts a defensive end in conflict with your normal stopping of the G play. If I'm used to power, okay, the guard's coming to kick me out, I'm teaching my defensive end to come down screaming down the line and wrong arm the defender. So he's going to get down. He's coming to mess up the party right now. He's not reading. Okay, well, that's great because if he's trained to do that, it's going to be an easy pull read every time for our quarterback, and we're going to get yards from that. If he's trained to stop the inside zone and to really read it, okay, then he's going to be sitting there and watching when he gets blown up. Um, it gets our offensive line moving on a down block whether to, rather than a true zone step. My big cons my big issue with zone when I first installed it, I would grew up a G guy. Um, I'm a power type guy, truly at heart. And when I wanted to install zone, I had a big problem with the whole concept of like elephants on parade and everybody just doing reach blocking to the right or reach blocking to the left. And, you know, true zone guys will tell me it's not like that. And I know more now, but I wanted to get the O-line moving on the downside, just like we do in power on a down block rather than a true double step, double team. And it gets me true. It gets me true double teams and angles. I'm going to flip over right now so you can watch some of the film. A lot of this comes from presentation. If you want to check it out online, um, I've done it for Football Scoop. I've done it for the Fieldhouse um, YouTube channel on how you blend the air raid together with the power run game. Because we were, I think we were able to do both for, together with certain success. All right. So we're going to talk about our inside zone real quick here. Okay. Inside zone blocking versus the 4-2. All right, 4-2, it's kind of easy to see it. We're just going to take this tackle right here. He's going to take a hard left step inside. He's going to dip and rip off this defensive end and try to get the play side linebacker, okay? I talked about before, if this defensive end starts to pinch down or scream down, that's just an easy read give right there. I'm almost letting him go, you know, give him a little basketball move or a little wide receiver move and getting up to the linebacker because we're going to give right here, and that's uh, we're going to have the give read right here, and that defense spin's going to blow, blow up that running back, and that quarterback's going to be gone. It's the hope there. We like to run to the one side technique because we're going down, down, down. I can really get, okay, right now I got this mic drawn up wrong. He should be more over here. I really like to get these two on a double to the backside backer, okay? So with the center, he's going to take a hard right step, hard left step. We teach four hard left step by the play side guard. We teach four hands on linemen, four eyes on the linebackers. We peel back. Then that leaves his three technique and his outside technique right here on the tackle. Easy put that fan back blocks right there. Um, we also have the ability to do a short read, okay? If I want to call it to the three side, okay? It doesn't give us a, it doesn't give us the double team blocks, but it gives us the angles. Well, really, we'll get the double team block to the back side now. I want these guys. I know I drew it up where he's going right to linebacker, but I want them really thinking double 
two linebacker because if this linebacker starts to scrape and change over top over here, center and guard have to have four eyes on him to be able to have the center come off right here and the guard overtake the one tech right there. If we're going to go to the short side, I like to read the three tech. So now my guard is the one dipping and ripping and leaving his defender alone as he goes up on play side backer and my tackles blocking out the fan, blocking out the defensive end. Now we're reading the three technique. If he fills the A gap okay, that's our read, read for the quarterback to pull and go B gap. If he sits at B, we're, the quarterback is really selling that sucker right now to get him to attack the tack, tack the tailback. If he doesn't, then we're giving it and the quarterback's taking off like he has the ball too. Okay, just sort of trying to take a look at it right now. We're in white. And this is from last year at Chatham High School. And you just see that defensive end attacks. We're going to play back again. You're going to see that defensive end attack right there. And our quarterback, Ethan, makes good read on it. Our play side tackle really doesn't get a good block on the linebacker. He kind of whiffs. That could be better, but I think it was a good read by Ethan there. Now you got us some black coming up here. Let's go back and go through Ethan's read real quick. So Ethan gets the give read here. Defensive end is outside. We don't get a good block on the inside technique. I'm a little bit ashamed about that as an outside, as a coach. But you see both these guys are looking for Ethan to run the ball. And what happens, our tailback Michael gets a good big gain right there. Again, back in the white. You see good read, good give read right there. Our guy tailback was about 6'3", 230, not 6'3", yeah, that was a different one. He was about 6 foot 230. Um, good, strong kid, was able to run the inside zone for us. And how do we complement that with the G play? Well, with our G play against the 4-2, you kind of see the similarities. We're dipping and ripping and leaving this to inside end. Now we got a double team on three. This is our play, the three tech side. We want a double team down, like I talked about. We're coming hard left step with the left, with the play side tackle, hard right step with the play side guard. We want to get four hands on this three tech right here, four eyes on the linebacker. We want a kick fan bad block here by the center, a good hard pull by the guard. We're teaching him right now. He's going to turn and rotate his body. We don't skip pull it. It's a flat pull down the line, and he's going to kick out. We're going to pull right. We're going to trap right shoulder. We're going to leave this defensive end alone. And sort of once again with the tackles, we're teaching them the same thing that we do on inside zone to their play side. It's the same type of thing to the back side. We'll get to the plays in a second. He's going to take a hard inside step, dip and rip, and he's up to linebacker. And that's the goal of the play there. Take a look at the G play here. Let it run once, and then we're going to go back and talk about it. Now this one. So. Let's talk about what they're giving us, okay? This team in particular expected us to pass the ball a ton, and that's why we were able to run for a bunch of yards on them. Okay, this defensive end right here, pretty good, yeah, pretty good player. Um, good, solid player. We are able to get him reading. He steps up and reads as a defensive end being coached to attack um, if we're running power. He should be filling that gap right there, but instead he reads it like he's reading zone. They gave us a 3-2 box. Our tackle, I usually like him here to come outside in and get an outside step and shield him this way, so that's where our running game is. But 
he manages to make up for it and shields him out. So our running back sees that running lane right there open up with a little cut. Layside guard. Blocking back here. He's supposed to fan back to the linebacker, the backside linebacker, I believe. Yep, flows or blitzes right there. So the center backside guard are able to pick those two up and communicate pretty well there with the nose guard and the backside linebacker blitzing. Our place, our backside guard pulls. Not the best kick out in the world, but it'll do. And an easy fan block by the defense fan. And we're off to the races. The guy who catches him is one of the fastest kids I've ever seen. The kid runs like a uh, – I think we took his indoor track time this year and converted him. He runs a 4-4 laser just based on his indoor track time and 55 meters. Okay. Still run the G play. Yep. If I learn not to click in the wrong spot. Okay, let it run one time. This one is a coaching tip for your offensive linemen or for your offensive line coaches. If I can get this defensive lineman to do this, this is what you teach defensive linemen not to do. So it turns out I'm a little bit ticked off. My offensive lineman should have decleated him right here. So I'm a little bit ticked off at him for that. But he ends up coming down. 70's already out of the play. And we're good right there. Easy, wide, you know, our down blocks are great. I'm going to see what my play side tackle. My play side tackle gets just enough of the backside backer where we're able to make a big play out of it. See it one more time. Just enough. 58 could have gotten a better block there but it doesn't end up hurting us. How do we add to the G scheme? Okay, additions. This is just how we call it, and this is to teach you how simple it is for us. Um, I won't use Alta Vista terminology because whenever we do play, I don't want that given away. So I use old Chatham terminology. We call our G play, we called our G play 25 or 26 G. 25 going to the left with its tailback, 26 going to the right with a tailback. What comes at after that? Well, we could run with our quarterback on quarterback counter, which we'll talk about in a second. That's our 15 or 16 G play. We could cut back, which gives you a counter look with the tailback. That's our 25 or 26 cutback G. Super G combines the ISO with the G block, and Dart brings the H back in for a GT counter. I tell my guys – my offensive lineman, five or six G is all you look for. You block it the same. We try to keep it simple for those five up front. And I'm going to talk about that more in depth in a minute, why keeping it simple really ends up um, being a great thing for your offense. So we pull here. This is our 16 G. And our quarterback ends up making a few guys miss and makes a good play. Let's run him back. So 16G right here. Once again, we're blocking just like 26G. Down, down, down. Play side tackle. Get this inside backer. Um, my pulling guard. Our guy goes to completely inside, so Ethan's got, he's going to have to make a little um, adjustment to his block right here instead of kicking him out. Because 34 ends up going completely inside with the fake. Um, 58, I'm a little bit ticked. They're sort of stopped right now looking for guys to block because it's all flowed with the tailback, and now we got the quarterback gone. I mean, you saw our defensive end got completely sucked in over here to where our, defense, our uh, pulling guard couldn't even kick him out. You know, he just sort of had the fan back on him. And then here we go. We're off to the run races. Off to the races right here just based on the angles we were able to get. 
And I'm going to say this, guys, we did not have a completely – I love my offensive line of depth. We did not have a complete dominating offensive line. We weren't the strongest in the world. I probably had – two guys on there that could legit squat 300 pounds, you know, 315 pounds, um, maybe three. You know, but – and those are varsity guys. They didn't squat 315 pounds, and they're not – it didn't help us much. Now, that was 16G. This coming up here is going to be 26 dart. And what happens here, we're going to get a little 20 personnel. I'm going to let it run. I'm going to show you how this helps us out now, too. Now, again, I don't, we don't run 26 here. We run 16 dart. Again, look at the Mike linebacker. So this allows us, okay, if I stop clicking on the wrong thing, If we pause for a moment. So they're giving us a 4 3 look here with wide linebackers. Once again, they think we're going to throw the ball all day. They don't respect our run game. So with Dart, even in 20 personnel, so what we're going to do now, this linebacker, or this tackle is going to come down to linebacker. The guard and center can now dig uh, double team back to backside backer, who really isn't even in the picture. We can almost have tackle cut off the three technique because we're reading this backside defensive end. Well, no, we're going on 16, so we're expecting the, ta the tailback to take this backside defensive end. I mean, if you look at this, they bite on the counter, and it gives us even better blocks. So I suggest if you have power in your run game out of 10 personnel, 20 personnel, that you put in the quarterback counter off of it if you can. Our quarterback right there, he shows some nifty moves occasionally, but he's a prototypical pocket passer. It's what he's going to be on the college level. And here we just got G follow. I didn't really talk about much, but you can run G follow and he's just following the pull. He's following the tailback now because our big 230-pound tailback ends up turning into a fullback on that one. I wish 64 gets his head in a little bit more inside there. For you offensive line guys, don't hate me on that one. Um, so this is just going over the block. And again, and we're putting it up against a 4-2. Um, it's just sort of basic looks. So you got the down blocks here. Just sort of, and same thing we talked about on 26G. Same thing we talked about. On our inside zone play, we got cutback G that will sit here and teach our tailback to take a step right here, take the handoff exchange. We're going one, two, and then we're cutting back and following the pulling guard. We have our follow, our super right here. So we're going to kick, and just like I talked about with Dart, now that tailback's up on play side backer. It gives our lineman down here a chance for better angles, down blocks there. And we got dart, okay? Dart out of 20 personnel. We're kicking. We're wrapping. We kick right here with the guard. We wrap with the tap. Wrap with the uh, H-back. It sort of gives us a GT counter type scheme with our quarterback there. Now, I'm going to stop share for a minute just so I can sit here and sort of talk about it and what it gives our line. And what it get like what it means to simplify the line for us and what it means to simplify in the running game. So if you go back here, try to get my board action in here. If you go back to what we've been doing, we've really been going over each day only a handful of concepts for our offensive line to really rep and learn. So if we're going to run inside zone, I'm going to give a three front two just to help you out. So right here, if we're going inside zone, I really want these two to work that double team technique. I really want these two to work the fan back block. Okay. 
These two are going to work double teaming to fan back to block right there. The play side tackles are going to work dip and rip right there, okay? And that's our inside zone. Off of the inside zone, what it can give you too, okay, again, same blocking, is a chance to run multiple plays with the same blocking, which is what I like, um, what I really like. So what we got installed, we can flat. This is what we call bash. I'll talk about flash in a second. So we still leave the same defensive end unblocked. This is an old Urban Meyer type play um, where he just sort of inverted veer or inverted inside zone. And now the quarterback is your A-gap read. Tailback is your outside read. So they just flip on that one. And then, you know, I like to do it also – with my feature back here, that's where my slot receiver would go to, you know, my slot receiver that's more of a running back would go as a feature back right there. Now, he's doing the same track as the tailback. He's going to get a little fast motion there, and we're going to get him on the read. But the tailback's coming back here to give that option look and to hold those linebackers, okay? Because eventually when they start flowing with that feature back, then you can just set, settle and run option. You know what's the cool thing about that? I've run inside zone. I've run bash. And I've run flash. All with the same blocking. I never had to change my blocking up on the board once. So I had three plays with the same blocking. What's the cool thing about G? All these plays with the same blocking. If you really want to look at what the difference is with G, an inside zone in our offense. Is do I want to run to the three or do I want to run to the one? Okay. So right there, we're still having, we're still teaching our tackles to dip and rip and go down. We're still teaching our center to be able to block on a one technique and we're still teaching fan back block. block. So no matter what, Okay, we're teaching sort of same principles. I'm focusing with my linemen each day on double teams. I'm focusing with my guards on the pull block, but the double team block and the angle blocks are really the sort of focal point of our offense and a focal point of our running game. And when you make it that easy for your offense line and you give yourself a blocking scheme that you can adjust to like that, that's how you make your offense get up and go.